What's up, everybody? Kyle Chris back with another Dragon Ball Super video. Um, yeah, just got back from Nats uh, maybe a few hours ago and uh, had a fun time down there. Very fun uh, event, being able to meet a bunch of people, just play some Dragon Ball um, in itself. That was that was definitely worth it. Um, the deck itself, uh, I played the 7Q deck down there. Um, didn't perform as well as I thought it was. Maybe not as well as, as, well as that was going to, but more so just um i think uh, a lot of my tech options just didn't end up working out which which is unfortunate but it does happen so um that is what it is uh but i am going to go over the deck list even though um we didn't do the greatest i, did, I do believe i went four and five um there are two games that i probably should have won one i was rule sharked unfortunately by a guy um and the other one was uh a little bit of the same situation but it is what it is, so I could have maybe at least, you know, got, uh, maybe top 64, maybe not, who knows. Um, but, we'll go over the, over the list. If you guys don't know what this leader does, um, attack you draw, and you gain, uh, 1k power for every card in your energy. Then you can awaken at 3 life, or if you have 4 or more energy, or then you draw, re uh, restand 1 and put a god from your drop to your the energy. And this is the side where you have crit, dual attack, uh, I'm sorry, crit and double strike if you have more than 7 energy. Uh, you get crit when you swing. If you have more than five energy, you get double strike. And then you get 1k for every card in your Z and your uh, um, normal energy area. So it's kind of the big idea with this leader. Now we'll go over the deck. Uh, I was at 56. Um, so what's funny is that as I go through the deck, I realized I was playing this deck more so as a mid-range combo deck. And um, thinking about it now... I probably should have just played the Crimson <laughs> Goku leader that everybody was playing. Uh, I really wasn't thinking about that leader at the time. I tested a lot of this. It felt okay, uh, but looking at how that leader played and how my deck actually was 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 running, I'm like, oh wow. If I take out these ramp cards, the deck is essentially running as if it's a Crimson Goku deck. So that was a little bit of a mistake on my part. Um, so we have the Visitor um, uh, package, which is your Whis. Uh, this is your ramp. This is basically the ramp for the deck. Um, is you run the Whis, the Beerus, and the Zeno. Uh, so we ran four Whis, three Beerus, and four Zeno. So um, Whis is probably the best one. You play it, draw a card, and you search your deck to play one of these in rest mode in your energy. Uh, Beerus, you can do the same thing from your hand. You tap one blue, play it in your Z energy, uh, your energy in rest mode. We, we only we, we went down the three because uh, you can no longer do the it was a raditz where you can't just keep tapping one blue to keep drawing a card, which would have made this deck obviously much better. But uh, you can't do that anymore. So going down the three actually was fine. Uh, we we just wanted to make a little more room for other stuff. Um, I don't think I missed a Beerus. Um, Instead, except for my last game in round nine, uh, where I missed, but, but by that time I, I wasn't really, <laughs> didn't really care too much. Um, but generally, most games I'm charging, me, I'm I'm going to be ramping once or twice the game. Um, that's why I was saying it probably was better if I would have played the Crimson deck, just because I I was kind of wasn't really super focused on the ramp. And then Zeno obviously is how you ramp. Once you get the five life, you use this, add this back to your hand, put another card down, and then you successfully ramped. So, uh, that is the ramp package. Uh, then we go into some combo stuff. So I ran uh, three Goku Black and two Unbreakable. This is the part of the deck that, like I said, as I was playing it, I realized I probably should just be playing the, the, the Crimson Goku. Uh, this is a 10k combo that draws you a card. And then when you have three Z energy, you play this guy. I thought this guy was incredible. And th my whole point of playing this leader honestly was just to use this card i wanted to utilize this card in some sort of deck and every blue deck i tested this just felt like the best one obviously i didn't test crimson but um this card you play to activate battle when you have three energy three z energy or a leader that's blue or goku black or zamasu play it draw a card bomb deck when your opponent's battle cards four or less it's very very good against sin and gogeta um which did actually put in a lot of work and also against gamma as well uh, so this is sort of my small combo package. The, the hard part was trying to get the three Z energy, but my thought was that um, obviously you have these, these. You can combo the Whis off after you play it. Um, combo one more card, maybe a Unbreakable, and then on your when you awaken, um, even if you're not in the combo step, let's say your opponent's on turn two and they negged one of your cards on board, you can restand, you can awaken. Um, 
if you have four energy and you can put one of your god cards into your z energy which then would give you three so then you can play goku black so that was kind of the idea just an just an easier way where i didn't have to um actually combo another card i can just use one from the drop area we have that um uh two weeks salt work uh, uh assistance this card is fantastic i love that I, I love this card all weekend uh, i should have ran a third one this is another god this is just a one drop negate and then you can combo this in the combo step with a battle card if your battle card is attacking a battle card then this becomes a 10k combo uh my my thought process was if i was playing against um uh goju to eight uh sin or in a, a mirror where they're playing or like a blue mirror where they're playing like a um, world blitz or something i can swing i can put this on top of a world blitz to make it 40 uh to make them have to get rid of a you know super combo and something else in hand um card's very good um definitely think in other variations of the deck if i play a god except like a god variation deck this is definitely a card that you would want to play very very very, very good card. people ended up having to read it every single time i played it um to peel off this was a, a tech that i've i don't want to say i came up with because i because I, I didn't um obviously this card's been around for a lot longer than i've been playing but i, I was uh, i was main decking this card um I, I was citing this card actually for a very for probably about the last month um just holding on to it as like a special tech to go into nats european nats happened we see we, we saw how well this card actually worked tech kind of became a little more viable then uh, and i just had to put in the main deck just so i saw it so uh but this card you choose a keyword skill um so apparently and i i should have disputed this because I, I don't necessarily agree with the judge who made this call apparently this card doesn't stop dual attack uh, even though this card would activate before dual attack activates because dual attacks an auto this is a counter so i don't necessarily agree with it um the judge was kind of being a you know about it but uh yep yeah, this is this actually cost me one of my games uh because of this ruling so uh it's a, it's a cool card very good um two god ceiling um probably actually should have just cut it from this list i don't think i think i activated this card maybe twice i really only activated this card in uh the uh, i had one matchup against the blue uh beerus ramp that's the only time this card really ever came down uh maybe maybe other one other time uh, but it, this wasn't very good in this particular deck. Um, one of my favorite cards for main decking <laughs> was Great Sandman. So um, I know some people cited it. Um, this card definitely gave me a lot of defense in these red aggro matchups. Um, deflect, Barrier, Blocker, Revenge. When this card KOs a battle card, um, you switch this card in one of your mono blue energy to active mode. Um, it's very good on turn three. I wanted a lot of turn three plays since I was kind of playing a ramp deck. Um, so Gogeta, Sin, decks like that where I can just slap this down on turn three. And I'm safe knowing I can go into the next turn unless they, you know, can get over this. But uh, this card killed eight drops. This card killed um, tons of four drops and two drops. And just being able to block, save it one time, restand. Then you get an energy back. And now you have, now you have another energy to play with for defense plus a on board. And a lot of people weren't main decking um, barrier answers to it. So this card just kind of sat on board. Uh, this card did get black smoked a few times. Uh, but my, my opponent had to pay two energy for black smoke. And then they weren't really getting any, any other value out of it. So it's a very good card. Uh, for the unisons, I played two Majin Buu and two Raditz. This is another card that people um, had to read. It's been a while. Uh, Majin Buu, we know what this card does. 20k dub. And double strike blocker bottom deck something receives an energy in itself this card doesn't really need too much talking to uh, i it was it, it was a good card uh, i think i played rad it's more than i played anything else i wanted another another turn three unison um i was gonna play tapion uh the uh, card that um no most notably now i guess from the card that andrew duvall was playing in his uh crimson build but my problem with uh, Tampion is that it wasn't giving me any defense. It was just giving itself defense by being a you know a 19k that pluses two. This card is a um, it's a plus zero draw one restands itself, and it's a blocker. When it activates blocker, you get to restand it. So being able to block a dual attacker 
double striker or just a just a single strike battle card just to restand this just having another three drop that just provides me with double blocking let's go the whole point just being able to put this card down there's a lot of times where this card just just stayed on the board and my opponent really couldn't do anything and then also this gave me access to god's healing earlier too as well so um 3d magic uh i cited a fourth one i think in this particular deck i probably should just just went up the four um it's weird though because you're mainly using it just like in red matchups you're mainly just using it just to keep one energy up unless they my you um which then becomes a little more difficult um so three might have been the right option um i did see it when i needed it so it did it did come in handy um we had three beerus uh and two ui this is our defensive package um beerus is a 10k bottom deck's a two drop draws you a card on your own defense also can bottom deck something on your opponent's turn higher than your energy it's also just a 10k combo and then ui was definitely one of the mvps of the deck um 15k for free on your opponent's turn uh, it restands itself or it restands an energy and it's a 15k but then also on, on offense this is a 15k that draws you a card um and since your leader just gains so much power when you swing just adding another 15k on top of that is just incredible um probably should have made main deck more of them um two cents of bean right call probably was three uh, i just couldn't find room uh two dirty burst should have should have had three <laughs> this is something I definitely should have three of in the main deck. Two, I just I didn't see it enough, and uh, all the all the games that I lost were only to red. I only lost to red, um, so seeing an, a third dirty burst in the main deck would have been a little bit better. Uh, chilled reinforcements. This card sucked. Um, I, I used it a few times, but it just never felt great to use this card. I would have definitely rather had another dirty burst. Um, our world uh, otherworldly blitz package so we have three worldly blitz and one of the bardock overrealms so one of the problems with this deck is that you do run battle cards you do get them in the drop area and when you, once you get them in the drop area world blitz essentially becomes useless because we're, we're never tapping six for this card as good as this card is we need to be able to play it for four so you can play it for four if you have no battle cards in the drop area uh but if you overrealm then you're, you're not gonna have any battle cards uh, now this card says whenever it's played you draw one and you bottom deck a card on your opponent's board for X amount of cards in your in your um, your drop area. So if you play it for four and you only have like two or three, you know, you know, you have two or three cards in your drop area, they're all extra cards, you can bottom back that many cards, but if they're battle cards in there, you can't. So Bardock's effect is you play it, draw two, and you pitch one. The pitch one you want to be an extra card, so that way you at least get one bottom deck effect. Um, now you have a triple strike, barrier, deflect, blocker. Uh, barrier on board and then it's going to restand itself and an energy again a very good card um this card won me probably i'd say two of my rounds completely uh just 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 won me two of my rounds so uh this was good it's a good package um two two baby eight uh we need the main deck two for one we needed more 10ks but also um, I wanted to deal with blue, and uh, this dealt very well with blue. All the, all the blue matchups that I played, I, I I I won pretty pretty easily. This card's a big reason as to why. Uh, to kale, another 10k. Um, didn't play kale nearly as much. Uh, it felt really bad into everything but blue. Um, like Gogeta, this just didn't feel great. Um, it felt okay in the sin. I just could never push through enough with it and i think it's just because i wasn't i maybe didn't optimize my deck correctly this card's definitely good if you're if you're playing a ramp deck you're gonna play this um two fajitas uh people were surprised when i told them i only played two fajitas um it's just because i i play some off color cards but also this isn't the main purpose of the deck um i didn't want to have to rely on this card to allow me to win the game but when I did play it, it did definitely come in handy. I uh, mainly just played it to get two energy back um, to do another play in my deck, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, but this card did come in handy a lot. Uh, we had um, one turning the tide in the main deck. You know what turning the tide does. This card won me probably the, the other half of my matchups. And then we ran the Gohan Secret Rare. Um, so basically I'd play this to get the two energy back. And then I would play Gohan and then Gohan um, wipe your entire opponent's board, ignoring barrier with their unison. They have more cards in hand. They, they burn a life, and then you activate main or battle. You can restand two cards. Um, if you restand this with the effect, 
against crit. So this is on your turn and your opponent's turn. So the idea with this deck is that you, you swing with your leader, you gain an abnormal amount of power for the turn. You then use Gohan's effect to restand this to get a second swing, and then you also gain the power again. Um, and a lot of the times against most, most of these decks, it was just very difficult for them to, sw to combo out of two double strike crits. Uh, and also you have a 40k double dual attack crit quote unquote that you can potentially have with this card too so this was cool um it uh, i love the gohan seeker rare this this worked out very well um just wasn't enough i think the main deck just wasn't enough for it to um really carry me like i said i think if i would have changed the deck a little bit and just switched the leader to crimson i probably would have had a better time uh, because the deck was mainly made as like a, a mid-tempo combo deck um, this is the Z deck, one Z leader, uh, one Fujita, um, one Cell, two Beerus, whoop, and two Fujito. Um, felt okay. I think I probably would add another Cell instead of a Fujito, uh, but that's probably it. Or maybe take out the Fujita. Uh, but I probably would actually play this leader again, honestly. Um, it was, it, it was, like I said, it did the best out of all my blue leaders in testing. I liked it a little more than SS3 just because I did draw a little more than SS3. But now that um, Crimson's sort of a thing, um, we're, we're kind of done with competitive Dragon Ball for a little bit, so I'll probably just wait to see what comes out next set. But Crimson's definitely gonna be an option. Uh, this card also works in Crimson. Um, so most of this is just probably gonna, just gonna turn into Crimson or whatever the next best blue deck is gonna be. Uh, the side deck, so we had one Dirty Burst, one Trunks, uh, Baby Ape, Turning the Tide, and Majin Buu, so you threw just extra, um, just extra for, you know, extra one-ups for consistency, just in case I needed it for particular matchups. Um, God Ceiling and Baby Ape came in against Blue, Dirty Burst came in against Red, this came in against matchups that I needed, Turning the Tide to win, and then if I was playing matchups that kind of went a little bit longer, I put, I added another Blue Unison. Um, Tushin never drew it. Sided it in almost every time. Never saw it. Probably should have just main decked it. Um, card's very good, but I just never saw it, so it never actually did anything for me, unfortunately. Um, uh, one Jiren never needed it because I never played against the blue deck that actually got to that far. Uh, one Miraculous Transformation. Um, in this deck, this card's really bad. Um, I just needed an extra slot, and I couldn't think of anything else to add. And this was and this was a 10k that potentially could be in the gate, so we, we just added that in there. Um, two Protector of the Earth, this card is cr incredible. Um, part of the reason why I wanted to play a ramp deck, I'm, I could have probably just played SS4 Vegeta <laughs> and did this a little bit easier. This is a Floodgate. Uh, you also can uh, return your entire opponent's hand to their uh, their board of their hand ignoring barrier. Or you can draw two and pitch one. This can also set up your, um, your World Blitz because then you can put uh, extra cards in the drop area. Uh, this card's very, very good. Um, definitely going into future formats this card is going to continue just to get better um, and I think SS4 might be the better ramp deck right now just because it can play this card on turn 4 instead of turn 5 um, Tutabora never came in because I didn't play against any green or anyone who played Topo uh, and then two god slicings these were for Gamma um, I played against one Gamma I never actually needed it because I just kind of killed them through. I kind of just swung through their uh, their their floodgate and then didn't really do too much else. Um, but it was there for just for that. Um, matchups were um, round one Gogeta. I two owed the Gogeta player. Uh, the uh, the uh, SS4 Gogeta player. Uh, round two I played against set one Frieza. Uh, that was a two zero as well. Very easy. I, I turned in the tide in both games. Couldn't couldn't get through that. Uh, round three I played against Beerus Ramp. Um, I two I, I won two one. I actually don't know how I won that matchup. <laughs> I probably should I probably should have lost, but I did draw into all three of my baby apes. That's probably why I won. Um, and then from there, it's basically all red except for one matchup. So I actually I, I played against Gamma, I beat Gamma two one, and then everything else was red. So I played against uh, another um, SS4 Gogeta. I believe it's the guy who made top eight um, with uh, with SS4 Gogeta or SS4. Saiyans, whatever the deck's called. Uh, he, he clapped me up. I just couldn't draw on the Dirty Burst. Uh, next game I played against Sin. Uh, that guy wasn't... I, I don't think it was a very good game. Like, um, I didn't draw enough good cards. And um, he was just kind of slow playing the whole time. Um, 
that game I probably had the ability to win, I just didn't draw correctly. Uh, I played against the Gogeta, uh, the Exodia Gogeta deck. Um, that guy wasn't very good. That deck is not very good. I, I lost because of a, of a rule shark effect. Uh, so hopefully that guy's happy with himself because I don't think he got top 32 either. Uh, so hopefully it was worth it, man. Um, the uh, next match I played against was uh, SS4 Gogeta again. Um, at that point, I played for like 10 hours. I was kind of over it at that point because I know I was going to get top 32. So that game was kind of meh. And the last one was it against a Gogeta player again. That, that guy was really cool. We had fun. I uh, was kind of messing around since it was uh, round nine. Didn't really care too much. Um, but yeah, that this was the deck. Um, I definitely probably wish I would have played something else. Um, it was a, was a fun experience, though. Uh, again, I probably would have had a better job just playing the Crimson deck uh, and switching up some cards because that deck fits more of my play style. Not this particular ramp deck, that, uh, which I was trying to make it sort of a combo deck. So, um, but yeah, that's it for me today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys, uh, if you guys did go to Nats, hope you guys did enjoy your guys' experience. Excited to go back next year. Um, and we're going to come back better for sure. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.